This week on El Cara Ham Radio, we're going to continue the termination panel build. We need to come from the controller through some pigtails out to the radios. So we need to create those pigtails and get those bridged correctly here inside the termination panel. Plus a couple of other goodies, possibly working with the power supply this week on El Cara Ham Radio. Welcome back to part three in building the GMRS repeater series. And today we're going to work some more on this termination panel and a power supply. And what we're going to do today is build some custom cabling to go from these termination bridges to the radios. And uh, uh, the first thing we've got to do is punch some holes into the little panels on the back of this chassis so that we have a place for the uh, cables to insert through. And we're going to take an old nine pin to nine pin male cable just laying around. We're going to snip it in half and we're going to expose the wires on the inside and then those will go to the termination bridges on the inside and the male ends will connect to the radios. AC4DM has a tone block here ready-made that he's used for past projects where we can make sure that the wires that we're setting up inside the, on the bridges are also the wires that we expect them in the correct sequence. And there's a color code sequence that you follow for that. So we're inserting one end of the wire, inserting the other end, just literally snip this cable in half, and we're gonna expose the wires on each end so that we can terminate them on those bridges, and then we can then connect those with jumpers to the uh, controller on the inside. Now, one of the things I learned as I worked on this part of the project with our Elmer is the attention to detail. I've never done anything like this, and certainly you could just poke those wires through and expose the uh, the wires on the inside, connect them to the post, and you could be done. But he's utilizing cable ties as a way to provide strain relief and to prevent the cables from getting pulled or yanked on, even inadvertently. And so these particular ties are going to be on the inside, and we'll also have some ties on the other side of the wall of the chassis so that the cable really can't move easily at all in or out. In addition, we started stripping off some of that outer, um, uh, I guess you would call it jacket, and uh, to expose the uh, shielding underneath. Now these are older cables. If you get some of the newer ones, they're not nearly as well shielded uh, as the old ones uh, are or were. And so that's what you see here is we're just taking off that outer uh, jacket so we can expose the shielding and then of course within that shielding will be the nine wires that we need ultimately so just getting this old stuff off you know a lot of people have some of these cables just laying around and uh, in this case uh, we didn't have to buy these at all uh, and uh, now we're just removing the shielding uh, wrapping the wires on the inside it's a little bit of a fiddly job to get that shielding off but uh, uh, I've shortened that up uh, for brevity here but uh, you can see we've got them removed on both of the cables and now all of those wires are exposed and then what we'll do is we'll begin to um, uh, basically expose the copper on the ends and attach them in the correct color sequence on the bridges. We're also going to add a couple of anchor points. Again, attention to detail here is what I'm learning uh, in this project. Chris and I are learning and others who watch this video. These anchor points, again, are for strain relief just to make sure that the wires are not going to move around once they've been attached. And so we're going to use, again, another uh, nylon tie here. It's going to sneak into the frame and we're going to anchor this bundle of wires to this anchor point. And uh, again, do you have to do this? No, you don't have to do any of these nylon ties, but what a great idea. And again, this is where you can take the wisdom of your Elmers and apply it in, not only in a project like this, but in other areas. I've seen him use these anchor points inside the emergency communications trailer as well. So he's used to, you know, just doing an, a, a fine job. Of course, he's a master electrician who used to work uh, in nuclear power plants, so he knows what he's doing for sure. So we've got it hooked up to the tone board. We've got the strain relief installed, and now we're going to begin to hooking these individual wires up to the chassis. We're using our tone to make sure that we've got the right wire. Of course, you're utilizing color as well. 
We've uh, put on the uh, connectors on the end to go underneath the terminal posts. So we've got the ground now set up for pin one, if you will, inside the bridge. Now keep in mind, we're going to jump from this bridge over to the controller and potentially over, uh, well, mainly to the controller, actually, as we talk about it. So we're just uh, inserting each of those as we attach a connector on the end to any of those wires. And you can see he's even bending the wires again for strain relief. And then he's going to tie these together to provide a nice, neat bundle that, again, won't be easily moved around or jerked out. Here we're tying the wires uh, into that bundle I was telling you about. He's using some, uh, some greased rope here, if you will, uh, to uh, provide a nice fit. And again, attention to detail. It looks great when he gets done with it. In fact, I'm paying close attention to this technique as well as the rest of it because I have to do the second bundle. <laughs> and as we'll see when we get done, mine looks similar, but it's not exactly as good as his. He's done this a few times, as you can imagine. So we're just getting this, uh, this wire bundle wrapped up here again so it's nice and neat. Just a great, great thing to watch and to, and, and to learn from. Again, we're uh, building a repeater. Well, nobody thought it would be this complicated. So you can see the two bundles. Mine was on the left, his was on the right. Similar. We'll just say they're similar. <laughs> now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to repurpose the shelf. As, we, uh, as I mentioned, I kind of let out of the bag in part one. The uh, shelf that we had uh, set up for the radios, we decided that's not how we wanted to go. And so we're drilling new holes uh, for use for the power supply that we're going to use and the radios are going to go into their own fitted panel which we'll show you uh, down the road. So we've removed the radios and again we're going to use this shelf for power. Not only for the IOTA power supply for mains power but we can also charge a backup battery with the IOTA so it's a dual purpose kind of charger and power supply and you can see now we're beginning to install the IOTA giving plenty of room there from the fan from the end of the shelf utilizing these screws and these nuts here. Uh, if you don't have like a kit of screws and nuts you really need to get some. As I work on these projects uh, here in the club I find out how many uses there are for size 8, size 10 and so forth as you're working building and fabricating these kinds of things together. Here we've got the IOTA installed, so we're installing the IQ charger. What this uh, little module does with the IOTA is put the battery that you're going to hook up through several cycles to keep it desulfonated and so forth, um, and as well as charging. So it monitors the battery and periodically, like about once a week or several days, it is going to increase the voltage so that it can desulfate the batteries. We're using lead acid batteries here. This is that kit I was telling you about. This is one that you could uh, potentially get. You can get parts from Mauser. You can get parts from lots of different places that are out on the interwebs. But this is just a kit of all kinds of screws and nuts and so forth and washers that we use for various projects. You'll also notice that we are now installing the distribution panel. Now, this little distribution box, I should say, is a homegrown affair. Uh, AC4DM uh, actually created a circuit board, had those sent off and, and sent back to him. So he's got the boards, uh, fuses, uh, we solder certain connections, all of that. And this is a homegrown little distribution. Uh, you could buy these if you wanted to. And we'll have a video in the future of building this and we'll give some of those away as, as a matter of fact. So we're going to install this little distribution box on the same shelf. You'll also notice we have that uh, uh, plexiglass standoff. That'll come into the video again here in just a few moments. So we're just installing this distribution box again once again on the shelf and getting those nuts, screws and nuts to affix it to the shelf and it already has an Anderson power pole connection on that one end. Alrighty, we've got that installed. Got the plate installed or nearly. We need to tighten down those screws so we can protect the uh, the insides of that uh, little distribution box. You can see the uh, AC4DM call sign there. That's a, again a home brew, little home brew distribution box. So we're just about done with that piece. Now we need to uh, add the uh, the standoff and this is where the negatives and the positives are going to come together from the power supply to the distribution box down to the battery and so forth. So he's got some of this plexiglass um, 
also from various projects that he's worked on over the years. He's got it cut to size. I think we actually liberated this from an earlier project from a different panel. And uh, you could use uh, Bakelite here. You could use Plex. You could use whatever is a good insulator because obviously we don't want the negative and the positive to touch the metal shelf or anything around it. So we're just installing the screws on the bottom to affix this plexiglass standoff. Notice we're also using anchors once again here, uh, installed it on the shelf so that we can take that IQ uh, charge module or monitoring module from the IOTA, just anchor that so it's out of the way and that cable itself won't get caught on anything if we need to remove this shelf in the future. Yeah, cleaning things up, attention to detail. Yet another nylon tie to anchor the AC cord coming out of the charger to the shelf. So again, it's not flopping around. There's that plexiglass standoff installed, but we've, we've got more work to do. We don't have any power coming out of the IOTA to go to the radios or to go to the battery or anything. So we're now creating some custom length cable wire, if you will, uh, that's gonna go from this termination point to the IOTA itself and ultimately this will go to the battery into our little distribution box there. So again these will be custom length we're just installing these uh, connectors onto there just to get an idea of how we want it to fit and then we're going to measure that out loosely and then cut those to size and they're literally just going to go to the right to the IOTA. You want to use the right gauge wire for the amount of amperage that you think you might be using uh, going out and for charge purposes. Uh, our radios are not going to be pulling a lot of current, nor is anything else in this particular project. So this particular gauge wire will be appropriate. Cutting to size, pretty much just eyeball that. It's right next door to the IOTA. We need to strip those off and then insert the, the wire into the IOTA. So now we got our custom link. You may also notice there was a little bit of heat shrink where we've installed those connectors. Anytime that we expose wire, unless it's going to go into a post of some kind, we're going to use some heat shrink around those connectors, again, to protect, make sure that we don't get any kind of shorts. So there's that heat shrink and installed into the IOTA at the same time after we soldered the ends to get good physical contact on those wires. Just finishing the installation there of the red wire, the positive, going into the IOTA after soldering. I don't know about you folks, this is a lot of fun just to watch again. Uh, of course, I was filming a lot of this and helping out where I could. That's the positive. We have to do the negative as well. You can see that's that's already been soldered or tinted, if you will, tinned on the end. So we need to insert that and then get the, that also screwed down for a good physical connection. Alrighty, so we've got the two wires installed for positive and negative, installing a little more heat shrink around those connectors so that again we have good protection and we don't have any potential shorts as the cables may be disconnected down the road. This is coming out of the distribution box. You might remember that uh, we had an Anderson power pole on a length of wire, but we shortened it and we put on these ring connectors to go on that uh, isolation post there. So we've got those now basically uh, put together. We're just doing a little bit of heat shrink here as we uh, go ahead and finalize crimping down these uh, ring connectors and then moving the heat shrink up and then uh, heating that up in place using that fancy, fancy crimper tool. Alrighty, probably for the second time we've started to uh, tighten down uh, these nuts uh, so that we've got good connectivity. We're going to come right back and add something else to this. But again, just double chest testing the fitment. Make sure it's going to work nicely. Look how nice it is. Links are what they need to be. There's not a lot of excess flopping around. Heat shrink where it should be used. I guess this guy knows what he's doing. But we're not done. We've got a lot of nice goodness going on here with our shelf that's basically providing power to what will ultimately be the cabinet that we selected and to the radios and so forth. But then we uh, got to thinking, well, we need to run a lead from those same posts to our battery so that we can keep a battery charged up in case we lose uh, main power. There's a DLS-15 shot there. Those IOTA power supplies are incredibly flexible and you get them in different um, uh, sizes as well as far as current 
uh, requirements and so forth. So you can see we've already created the wire with the ring terminals, the heat shrink as well on this new cable. And this is again got Anderson power pole connector on the other end so that we can connect it to our battery box, similar to the battery box we built in a previous video. You don't have to make things too complicated. Of course, technologies get better as well. You could utilize lithium. We're usually using lead acid because they're just around and common, but uh, again, different batteries could be used here with an Anderson connector. So we're just finalizing, tightening these down on that isolated posts, couple of posts. There we go. We've got our bear in there. Anderson's gonna go on the other end. So we're putting on some of those Anderson uh, uh, leads, if you will. Crimping those on nicely. Then we'll insert those into the red and black plastic ends. Getting the positive now. And uh, he always bends them in a little bit so that when he comes in for the crimp, they will wrap around correctly. Good physical connection here. And then he finishes them off with a little bit of tinning just to make sure we've got really good connectivity there because these wires are going straight to the battery. Therefore, the current possibilities here uh, are higher. So we want to make sure that we have good, again, connectivity, good physical connectivity as well as a little bit of tinning. And we had to file these down just a little bit. They were being difficult to get into the plastic Anderson uh, connectors there, but eventually they did insert and click. You're always lo looking or listening for that click as you go in. And with these ends installed, we should be able to connect this to the battery and then uh, be able to see that we are supplying power. We're not connected to mains at the moment, but are we supplying power? If you can notice, we have an LED running in the distribution box. We have the uh, charger, IQ charger on the IO to blinking. And we've just hooked up a simple little uh, voltage meter LED. 12.4 is what the battery is currently putting out. So we're not charging the battery, but uh, but we are supplying power. So if we were to lose mains to the uh, repeater, it would work. Now this is with the IO to actually connect it to AC power. So we have AC power providing power to the distribution box and ability to charge the battery at the same time. So you can see we're at 14.6. That will drop over time as the battery becomes uh, fully charged. Coming up next on El Cara Ham Radio, we have port part four of the GMRS repeater build, and we're going to show you the new way we're going to mount those radios. Hope you stay tuned. 73.